Well, everybody's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. It is a great place to be, South Carolina. I'll be very brief. Y'all have all heard to make a good speech. You stand up to be seen, speak up, be heard, and sit down to be appreciated. So that's what I'm going to do. I think the points that have already been made are, are very important. What I'd like to tell you is that there's no, pl no better place for economic prosperity than where we are right now. Uh, you read about it in the newspaper, these companies that want to come here, and it's a, it's a pleasure to me always to talk to people, as I have over the last few years, who are from outside of the United States that tell us what they see inside of the United States and what they see here in South Carolina. And I'll tell you, everything that they see here in South Carolina is positive, and that's why they're coming here. So we, we're in a great situation that could hardly be any better. And as they said years ago, I think in the context of television, remember it was called a vast wasteland. Some people, that was back in the 60s. Someone said that's what's on television is a vast wasteland. Well, some folks say that's come true. Others, though, you remember it was uh, one of the philosophers said that the medium is the message. That is, it doesn't matter so much what is said as what's saying it. And that applies here because, as you've noticed, you have a combination of people sitting on the stage that is a rare combination in the United States. Here you have Bobby Hitt with the Department of Commerce. He's been there for a number of years representing the government. You have Susie Shannon of the Competitiveness Council, which was created by the Department of Commerce as a separate organization to coordinate all of the exchanges, information, and collaboration among business and industry in the state of South Carolina and the state. And also we have Joan Gable with the university. Now, th th those three components are very important because you don't find that everywhere. You, it's rare that you find a major research university in the country that has the flexibility and ambition to work with businesses, I call it brain power, but to work with businesses, industries, manufacturers who are setting new goals, setting innovation, bringing in new ideas to make us more and more competitive in the world. And no university has more strength at its disposal than this university. And in addition, we have Clemson in the upstate, and you know the great strides they're making with ICAR. In addition, the medical university in Charleston, off the scale in medical research. We have three major research universities that are willing to work and eager to work and put resources and young brain power and the, the power of professors and researchers who've been in it for years to put it all together to make South Carolina even more competitive. There's no place that is outrun in South Carolina today in competitiveness, and that's why these people that I talk to from all over the world, and so does Bobby Hitt, so do others, that's why they're asking about South Carolina and coming to South Carolina. We're in a remarkable place. You remember the story about the city slicker that went to the circus, and he saw the huge elephant, Jumbo we'll call him, was over there, and he had a little tiny chain around his leg tied to a little tiny stake. And the city slicker said to the ringmaster, that elephant, why do, you, why do you do, he could just walk off. He wouldn't even notice that. He'd pull the stake right out the ground. And the man said, well, we put that chain on him when he was a baby, and now he doesn't know that he can walk off any time he wants to. Sometimes I think we in South Carolina, as well as other states, are encumbered by low expectations. Well, as the president of this university and the president of Clemson University said in the last few years, they said, we are tired of hearing People say that South Carolina is a small, poor state and it can't do anything. They said, we don't want to hear that anymore because it's not true. And I'm telling you, it's not true. Nobody has the assets required for economic growth and prosperity than your state does right now. With the great port that we have that's getting deeper and we export, as, as you know, we export about $5 billion worth of aeronautical equipment and discoveries and things out of, out of the port. We export more the, in value, more vehicles than any state in the country. We manufacture more tires in South Carolina than any state in the country. We're top on every list. We're number one in manufacturing potential in the country. Charleston for many years has been the number one tourist destination in the United States as well as in the world. 
and people I talk to all over are thrilled to come to South Carolina. We have the greatest technical college system in the world, started in 1961. We have components in that that have just supercharged that. People don't know, but we have teams from our technical college system and Red ESC and other augmented parts like that that will go to a country somewhere and look at their plants and spend time and understand the kind of skill, the kind of techniques, and the kind of education it takes to have the people that can operate through that kind of robotic machinery in many cases, and they'll come back in and design a course at our, one of our technical colleges to teach the people in that area how to do work in that plant. Nobody else in the United States does that. We do it for free if a company is willing to come here, and we'll do it for a company willing to expand. So what I'm, what I'm here to say is we have, we, we have arrived. We're at a place now where we can be a model for the rest of the country, as the U.S. Secretary of Commerce said, just in fact, he said it twice. He said South Carolina, with its technical training, with its workforce development, and with its collaboration with major universities, is a model for economic development in the United States. So what I want to say is that is true, and we are right in the middle of it. So we need to take advantage of it. We need to be sure for our children, their children, and all the rest, that we don't miss the opportunity that we have right now in this state to take a giant step forward in economic prosperity. And from where I've been, what I've seen, I can tell you when people get up in the morning and they go to, go to work where they want to work and they're happy about it and they have a good job, a lot of our problems go away. What happens? More people are working. Uh, we can, you, can not only keep taxes low, but we can actually lower taxes because the more people that are working and have jobs, even at a lower rate, more money comes in, as has been demonstrated first by President Kennedy's programs and then by President Reagan's programs. But we, when people go to work, what goes down? Divorces go down, drug uses goes down. What goes up? Marriages go up, happiness goes up, education goes up, criminal domestic violence goes down. A lot of the problems that we struggle with disappear when we have economic growth and prosperity. So finally, just let me say again, we have got it all. Everything that we need, including the lowest labor union participation rate in the United States, all of these things give us an advantage and probably our greatest one, as was said by the chairman of BMW just a few weeks ago, when they were expanding, putting another $900 million into the plant up there in Spartanburg, which uh, Spartanburg County, which by the way, produces a brand new BMW every 61.7 seconds. Hard to believe, and they're expanding. It's gonna be even more. But he said, he put it, he put it this way. He said, South Carolina is a handshake state. He said he's been over the world, he's been to many states, he's never seen a place like South Carolina that he calls a handshake state. That is, somebody tells you they're gonna do something, shakes your hand, it will be done, it'll be done with passion, it'll be done with resilience, it'll be done with determination, it'll be done with loyalty, and it will be done. And he said it's the people of South Carolina that make all the difference. So here we are. And also in South Carolina, we have something very rare. Most of us related to each other in one way or another, as you have learned over the years. In fact, I remember a lawyer once said that uh, he has people coming into his office saying, I have a legal question. What's your legal question? He says, well, if we were married in South Carolina and divorced in Georgia, are we still cousins? So you see, our size, our location on the ocean with a magnificent port and these institutions that have been built by our strong, strong people over the years have given us an advantage. It'd be a crime for us to waste it and to miss this opportunity. We're on the cusp of even greater prosperity than we've ever had before. And you are right dab smack in the middle of it. So we're for you. Anything that, that I can do, the state government can do, anything that the businesses that we work with in state government can do, anything our friends can do to help you in your work, we're for you, we're there, and we thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. May I be excused from this honorable court? I got something else to do. Thank you.